Today I'd like to introduce you to a very versatile tool which is called the cloner and as the name suggests it can clone something and actually it's a very useful tool not only in modeling but in everyday work with cinema because apparently you need to clone a lot of things all the time. So let's jump into Cinema 4D and I prepared this kind of uh, T-can here again. Uh, we have the T-can, we have the logo thing inside of it and we like to add something here on the lower part of our T-can. Uh, let me pull up the uh, drawing tools here to illustrate. So let's say we want to add some support legs or feet here on the bottom of this T-can. Uh, might be four, could be like five or six or maybe only like three. We will see. We have to. We want to art direct this while we're doing it. So, um, in order to do this, let me hide this. Um, what we can do, we can do it manually. We could, for example, uh, decide that we like to have a sphere-shaped support leg down there. Uh, let's push the segments up to a high number. Maybe let's go to four centimeters. And then I could place it like this. I might even go to the orthog orthogonal views, like here from the top. As you can see, it's still the version where the handle is uh, rotated to the side, but we will use this anyhow. And you could copy and paste this over and then copy and paste from there. And it's quite easy and fast to do this. But now let's say from an art direction perspective, we say, nah, I rather run only like three of those support legs. So you delete one and then you move those things around. It, it, it will never be perfect from the position wise and you're moving things around and it will just take forever. So in this kind of use case, what we can use is a cloner. And let me delete those spheres and we do a shift command reset transform on this one so that it's back at its root position. Now, the cloner, you find the object here, is another of those green objects, which means it's one of the generator objects. Uh, so as this is kind of a generator, this means we have to push our object inside of this object to make it, uh, to make it work. So as you can see, we have clones now. So this cloner copied our sphere in this kind of crit-like pattern. Let me hide the T-can here for a second. As you can see, we have this kind of crit-like pattern. Now, we can change that. If you go to the cloner and you go to the mode down here, the object properties, we can change the mode from crit to radial to linear to object or to honeycomb. Now, honeycomb would basically just mean we have this kind of honeycomb pattern where one row is offset in one direction to the other ones. Um, object would basically mean we clone our uh, spheres to an object. So let's, for example, say we like to clone this to the T-can. And as you can see, uh, it will kind of randomly put our objects on the T-can. Could be a nice effect if you want to um, simulate dropping water down or like moisture accumulating on the outside of our T-can. Uh, that, that's what you can use the object mode for. Uh, you can also have a, a linear mode. This means, for example, in this case, just cloning it uh, vertically. And we have the radial mode, and this is what we like to use in our scenario here. So the T-can back visible, move the cloner down. And as you can see, we probably want to decrease the amount here of the radius so to get this kind of thing down here maybe you want to push this back up a little bit and uh, as you can see this is how that looks like so that could be kind of the support legs maybe we want to make it a bit smaller the nice thing is now i can just do this and all of my clones will be scaled down uh, and i can also change the count so for example let's see how this looks like with three support feet and maybe with more, uh, oops, we have something like this. So it's a great way, very non-destructive and it's always 
a good way to art direct something if you see it actually and you can don't have to think before how it looks like you can just do it and try it out so i think i go with uh four or i think five five is good for me and have five of those kind of support legs down there now um another thing which is great whatever happens to this kind of sphere whatever modification deformation or whatever we do to the sphere will be applied to the other ones and let me show you another neat little tool here um, which is called soft selection and first of all we like to do or to make this sphere into a polygon object make it editable and then we can play around with this now in order for this to work um, you have to deactivate the cloner for a second and let's hide our t can here uh, to focus on our object at hand also another tip if you want to focus something which is maybe off center off screen here in your viewport you can just hit the s key on your keyboard and with that it's back into focus now what i like to do i like to push this single button here and as uh, you see it's still activated um, so normally it would look like this what i would like to do is i want to push this uh, polygon point upwards and i want all the other points to move with it but with a fall off. I don't want to move like all points upwards. I want to move this point the farthest up and then uh, following the other points with some kind of fall off. This is what we can use the soft selection for and you find this when you activate the move tool and then you have next to the access tab, you have the soft selection tab, you can enable it and you see this kind of preview where it shows you how the deformation or the, the linear fall off would look like. So for example, we could push it to the outside to create something like this maybe a drop or something um, actually to make a drop we would probably use something else here from the fall off so we can change between different things so for example we could also use a needle um, as you can see if I change it afterwards it will not change what we have done before so you have to kind of uh, go from there so you see that, that the things have kind of different effects depending on what kind of thing you decide here and you can even make your own fall off by using the spline thing and then go wild on this kind of curve and therefore uh, create maybe something like this, like this which uh, yeah looks like looks like this and this is like behaving uh, how, how we use the curve of this kind of spline here um, anyhow I think we can keep it simple what I like to do is just move this thing a little bit up so that we can get this kind of flattened surface here and maybe we can uh, also scale this thing down a little bit so something like this activate the cloner again activate the t-can again click on the t-can press s to focus on it and this is how our little support lag or feeder look like i think i still want to move this a little bit further in so this is how this could look like now we have two options um, we could design it in a way that they are actually like a separate object which is clued or pinned into this kind of t-can for this what i probably would do is i would um, go to the, the sphere here again maybe deactivate the cloner again uh, because we want to work on this center object here and as you can see this loop here let's select the the loop selection tool um, this kind of loop here is where this t can kind of intersects with our sphere and what we can do is we can use the extrude to extrude this to the inside and then if we activate the cloner again click on the t can s to move the camera back and let's go to the model mode uh, it's hardly visible but maybe as soon as we activate the um, sub uh, the screen space ambient occlusion we might see it now it's actually very hard to see so let's push this out a little bit further um, maybe that's a bit too far so yeah what I'd like to illustrate is basically that if we do the extrude here on this kind of loop selection we can uh, set it more to the inside and by that have the kind of feeling or effect that this kind of object actually is attached to the bottom and is a separate object 
Um, let me undo this to show you a different way and to use one of our deformers again. Now, what we can also do is to use the collision deformer. And as I mentioned on the deformer episode, I didn't have much use for this, but in this case, I found a useful scenario to use the collision uh, other than doing collision stuff and animations. So the collision thing goes to the TCAN. We only want to uh, apply it to the TCAN, not especially to the logo. And we like to go to the collision object and on under colliders, we can add the cloner. And as you can see, we have this kind of effect. So the nice thing is now, if we want to design it in a way that this should be like melted from one part and not a separate object, we get exactly this kind of effect with the collision tag. There's one thing I did though, which you haven't probably done uh, in the scenario of your TCAN. And that, that is, I vastly increased the amount of segments down here to get this kind of effect. So let me show you how we can do this. And I use the funk break selection to select this kind of area down here and delete it. You can do the same thing. You can just delete the bottom part, the bottom cap, just get rid of it. We will add a new one to it. And we can do this by using the close polygon hole tool. The close polygon hole tool is a simple tool. It will just uh, close your object. As you can see, there's still the points here on our edge from my previous thing. What we can do is go right click, uh, optimize, now it didn't work in this case. Uh, let me see if we can actually do something about it. No, I don't think we can do. Um, so at the moment I have the problem that I already added those kind of points here um, and I cannot get rid of it. So let's go to the complete edge and let's delete the edge. Will it do it? to me? No, it won't. Uh, let's act deactivate the soft selection. So yeah, sorry about that. Didn't, didn't thought that would happen. Okay, let me go this way. Now, there we go. Deleted. Okay, might be uh, look like a bit off here because I deleted one of the beveled edges. But anyhow, what we can do, we can do this and you have to probably it will look like this for you. So it's a flat surface. What we want to change in the close polygon um, tool, we want to set this to crit. We want to have this kind of crit pattern. The crit pattern is good because it will allow us to do a clean subdivision. So we can go back to the funk break selection tool, select the lower part here, and then again, go to subdivide and do the subdivision again and do it again until you get to this kind of very high density kind of mesh. And then this will look good. Otherwise, let me go back here to a lower resolution. Um, you see, it won't work at all. It's just not working. So you have to get the amount of subdivisions in here. And I just use the shortcut US to subdivide. US subdivide, US subdivide, and by that you get this thing. Now, if you paid attention, you noticed we have suddenly a fifth obje object down here. So the cloner is set to five, but we have one, it's actually the sixth object. We have one, two, three, four, five, six objects. So apparently the collision tool or uh, deformer sees not only our cloned object, but on also the original one, which sits right here in the center. Um, there's a solution for this, but it's a bit destructive. But anyhow, that's how you can do it. You can actually also make this cloner editable. So it can, as with the parametric objects and basically any other object in Cinema 4D, um, you can make it editable, uh, sorry, make it like this, and then you lose the cloner functionality, but now you have all the spheres you copied before, basically inside of the cloner, now as separate objects. And as you can see now, the center sphere is missing. Yeah, well, that's um, 
one introduction to the cloner and we learn more about the cloner maybe in a in a later session but for modeling purposes uh, this is how you use the cloner <laughs>